What is going on, everybody? Slide style is on your screen. It is practice action coming at you today, and we are getting ready and wound up for Red Ring coming at you this Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Exclamation point slide style in the chat will take you to the official slide style Discord, which is where you can find out every single little detail of every single little thing you need to know about a slide style event as a fan, as a driver, as, as anybody. Go check it out. That's the spot to be, but we are here for practice. Got a couple new features. Big game update came out just before the last event, but wasn't, wasn't really able to dive into any of those features, but we have been able to do that now. So welcome, everybody. As we are now high above the course here at Red Ring, you see one of the new features immediately off the bat. We can finally see the tire marks on the asphalt. We can see the track rubbering in and you get a great visual representation of what the line is. It is amazing to see. This is something I've wanted for a very long time. But at the same time, you can see one of the problems that has come with this last update. When you see these cars wiggling and dancing around on your screen, all blurry and everything like that, that is not Twitch. That is not the stream. That is not a problem with the streaming PC or anything like that. That is happening in the game. The drone camera currently, I mean, every, it works fine. I can fly it around fine, as you see. But watching the cars, there is something very very wrong with it it may not come across because i do have uh the stream i believe is at 30 frames a second right now yes it is um so that should smooth a lot of it um it actually might not be bad on the stream but watching it on my screen right now i mean it is it'll give you a headache it's that bad um it is it's pretty intense so that is a current problem going on with the game so I will not be sticking around on the drone camera for very long because it does seem to be okay with our in-game, I call them the TV cameras. That seems to be fine. Well, he's doing a little flipping action over here. Wayne and Tempa getting after it in the server as well. But as I said, absolutely loving where you can see the line rubber in over time just adds yet another level, level of realism to the presentation here for our events. Does not seem to be negatively affecting the performance at all. But anyway, got to say what's up to everybody. Han with the follow, appreciate that. Got signed up after the last event, so he is here to hang out with the boys today. Icy is here. What's going on? And Fire with the with the Prime sub. Appreciating the support as always. I know I do not stream, you know, regular daily content as much as I was before. Well, actually, I just don't do it at all anymore uh, due to the uh, all of the things going on in the racing world for me. But I appreciate you guys' support and making it possible to keep things like slide style going. And uh, in Fight Star, whenever I'm going to be able to do that, I wanted to get back into that this week. But on Monday, my voice was absolutely just destroyed after the, the weekend at the racetrack. And then, of course, slide style on Sunday. And I had to do a lot of yard work and, and stuff like that uh, over the course of the last couple days. So I figured I'd focus on that, get things straight around the house. And I had some uh, work to do on my slide style code here. Speaking of which, slide that out up in the top left there. Had a little bit of work to do, so I figured I'd put uh, Fight Star on the back burner. We'll try again next week, and hopefully we can get back into that. But I do appreciate the support from everybody. No, screaming at you guys on Sunday is what made me lose my voice. Between, if y'all think I talk a lot now, <laughs> y'all should hear me at the racetrack once the uh once everything starts and i'm you know calling the cameras and telling these guys what shots i want 
uh, giving call outs based on what's happening on the racetrack for them. You know, if they need to pick up a couple of cars that are side by side coming off a of turn two or, you know, whatever it may be and having to relay all that information. If you think I talk a lot right now, you should hear me on the racetrack or on the racetrack at the racetrack on Saturdays. Whew. So between doing that, not getting a whole lot of sleep, waking up, doing slide style and, and, and bringing it, you know, I, I y'all know how hype I get about this. I love watching y'all do what you do on the track. Um, and bringing that excitement to people watching at home. So I love to uh, bring that level of energy as much as I can. So those uh, two days back to back, that is one consequence I did not think of of us having slide style on Sundays is having that happening back to back. But to keep this from giving us a headache any longer, I'm gonna go on and switch over. To our TV cameras here. See, definitely not uh, not glitchy at all here. Nice and smooth. Loving the visual here of the rubber on the racetrack. Cannot get enough of that. It's one of my favorite things in real life. Uh, going to South Boston, for example, after it's, you know, rained a couple of times. The track's just been, you know, sitting. It's been cleaned off. Um, they've got a thing that they can drag around the track to, to kind of clean as well. But you go to the track and it's just, you know, plain, simple asphalt. And then after Friday practice, all the laps the drivers put down and just seeing the, the groove through the corners, rubber in. And you can get a little bit of a hint of how the track is driving based off the weather and track temperature and everything like that, uh, based off where where the track represent the most and uh, what the drivers are having to do to get the most speed out of their cars. And it absolutely is visually noticeable and it's the same thing here is seeing the way that the line develops and how these guys are driving and what what the preferred line is but yeah it, it adds a, a level of realism that i am a huge fan of fire says he's getting his wisdom teeth removed tomorrow well i hope that goes well for you. Modern medicine is a hell of a thing, whereas that used to be a pretty uh, invasive deal. I mean, it is an invasive deal. They're removing teeth out of your head, but where it used to be pretty invasive and the, the recovery for it was fairly rough. Uh, I mean, like, you know, 20, 20 years ago, you know, when I was young and you heard about the teenagers, oh, they're going to get their wisdom teeth out. And it was just this, you know, thing. It was a whole thing. And anymore i've known a couple people that have had them out um within the last like five six years or so and it's just a couple days they've got it you know like kind of liquid only for like the first day or two and then they're on soft food after that and then they're fine and everything's cool and they you know it's just the the modern medicine and the technology for them to be able to go in and, and do something like that and have it to where your body can so quickly heal it's crazy but hopefully that is a smooth process for you. Hopefully it's also worth it for you in the long run. I still have uh, still have mine. Um, they are all four of them are pointed outwards. So they're not like crowding forward into my other teeth. So when as they were coming in, when I was like a teenager or whatever, like, you know what it feels like when you bite your cheek on it? Like, say you're eating food, you accidentally bite, like, the inside of your cheek somehow, you know, something, whatever. Like, I was doing that, like, as I was talking. Because, like, they were, you know, poking. They're both, like, on a 45-degree angle outwards. So, like, the bottom ones are pointing towards, like, my ears. And the top ones are pointing towards, like, my shoulders. <laughs> so, like, you can imagine as they were growing in, like, I was constantly just biting the inside of my cheeks. But uh, over time, my 
you know, like the scar tissue or whatever, I guess, got used to it. But they weren't really affecting any of my other teeth. And they're actually, I mean, they're pretty damn easy to uh, to brush like that. Because that's a, a big problem, too, is your wisdom teeth will grow in such a way that you can't brush them. And they can get infected. And, all you know, not to talk about gross stuff during the, the drift practice stream. But, you know, things, all those kinds of things are, are part of that. So I'm very lucky to not have to deal with that. I just, you know, bit my cheeks for a year or two. And then... Now everything's pretty much normal. I I can't get enough of this damn the tire tracks, the, the rubber laid down on the track. This is so damn cool, man. I mean, it's like closer and closer. Like, this looks like real shit, man. Like, look at that. We've got a starting line. Like, I wish... This was a thing we could do, like, with our console friends. Because, like, I would... If we could somehow put lines and things on the tracks and cones and stuff like that within the game, you know, to build your own line or whatever, if I could share that with you guys, like, you know, in the vanilla game so that our console players had it, I'd love to do that because I would love to have, like, a starting line, like, boxes that you, you know, because we have our starting procedure for slide style with the lead car, one car length behind the chase car. To be able to have those boxes drawn, you know, on the track for you guys to roll up to would be so damn cool. As we see Skull here pulling up to the start line. Fire says the two bottom ones are coming, are, are growing in inward. Yeah, see, that's, they've got to take care of that and that's going to cause you some pretty potentially painful issues. Let's see if I can get my new uh, feature I've been working with here going. Here we go. We're watching Skull on screen right now. Show that down at the bottom, right? We can also show uh, some driver points. You see Waifu here on screen. Do not have the correct delivery colors for this car. But we can show that down there in the bottom right. You can see two points already on the season coming from the first event. Tempo on screen as well here. Cruise in the server. It's a name we love to see. Don't have the right colors for this machine either, of course. Thought I saw that red machine in the server earlier. Waifu in theory on the super close transition. J Stars here, what's going on? Icy said his uh says his teammate sign. I can uh, I can take a look at that. Let me see about uh pulling that up on the other machine here. Should be good there, I 
Onion says his car is in the shop, so he's just going to hang out. Got you on that, Onion. How you been doing, man? I miss playing some Counter-Strike with y'all. You have no idea, but I'm telling you, I have been keeping an eye on things. I mean, of course, the pro scene, but also just keeping an eye on things going on with Counter-Strike. And good grief, man. The cheating shit has gotten absolutely out of control. Some of the videos I've seen of everything. Charlie's home. Hello, Miss Charlie. Slide style practice. Give me a second. All right, well, who are we going to? Let's see. Wayne, Wayne, you're going to be the show for a minute. Yeah, like you're not used to that, motherfucker. Uh, yeah, stop winning, loser. Well, he's not a loser if he's always winning. No, that's what makes him a loser. He flashed his lights at you. Yeah. All right, well, hang on. Let me let me get the update from Charlie real quick so you guys enjoy the Wayne show. Look, we'll even put it up, put it up on the screen. The Wayne show, look at that, 10 points. Perfect first event, top qualifier, took it all the way home, won the event, got all the prize money, got all the points. But it's going to be the Wayne show for a minute. I will return in just a moment. Be right back. If anybody shows up in the chat and they're like, hey, where's Alex? And I'm still going in like five minutes. Just be like, hey, he'll be right back. <laughs> Hang on just a little bit. Matter of fact, matter of fact. Hang on. I wonder if I can't put it on this screen and have the new song. Of course, uh written and created by Tofi. Huge shouts out to old Tofi TV there. Give give Tofi TV a follow if you haven't already, but we're going to we'll get that song playing so y'all can hear the the slide the official slide style theme song. Y'all enjoy Wayne tearing it up with these guys.
Back into it here. What's going on, everybody? Sorry about that. Had to get the update on some work stuff. We ain't looking at Wayne no damn more. He wins everything. He's always everywhere. We're going to change the damn channel name to Wayne on your screen. No more Wayne, damn it. <laughs> for everybody that just joined in, sorry I was uh, absent for a minute. But uh, let me let me check up on what everybody's talking about over here. We well, all talking about a different game, so like that. I got you. Um, but yeah, the uh, there's Red Phaser in the server. Um, The, uh, with Counter-Strike, like what I was saying before Charlie got here, the fucking, the cheating problem is just absolutely insane. Like, I've, from a couple of the games that I played, like, matchmaking, I saw a little bit of it. Um, I only saw one person the last time, like, when I last played, probably, like, a, a you know, a couple months back or whatever, the few games that I played, I only saw one person just, like, blatantly, just, like, with a scout, just, like, tapping people through walls and everything. Um, I only saw one of those, but in a handful of games that I played, there, I mean, there are definitely people that, that are, have walls or aim or whatever. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty easy to tell once you've been, around the game for a while. I hate this this idea that you see online that people think if if you have if you're below a certain rank or you're below a certain level in Premiere that you're like not allowed to have an opinion on it. Like I have two thousand hours in Counter Strike and I've watched probably just as much of Pro C S. Um, I follow the game, I study the game, I wrote my own, you know, camera and graphics overlay system for the game so i know the maps on like pixel by pixel you know i i've got my overlay set up so i had to watch a ton of highly skilled highly competitive games i was watching pro demos while testing those uh but also doing the stuff with csc um watching a lot of really high level players and, and having a, a really solid understanding of how the game is played. I, I might not have the physical ability, but I, it's the same thing. It's like I know everything. There is not everything when, I, when it comes to history, but like I could tell you anything that you could possibly need to know about late model stock car racing in you know the mid Atlantic region of the United States. Like I can tell you all about it. like the cars, the tracks, like what it's all like what it's all about. I can't. I've never sat in the seat. I can tell you right now, if I even did get in one, I'd be two to three seconds off the pace of a skilled driver. I'm terrible. But can you tell me that all of my life history of knowledge of late model racing is, you know, doesn't count? So, like, I always get really frustrated when people act like that online. They're like, oh, you, <laughs> you're, you're under 6,000 ELO on Face It or whatever, so you can't, you don't get to say. Fuck off. Like, that's not even a, you know, <laughs> that's not even an option. Like, of I you know, just because I don't have the physical skill doesn't mean you can't be a, an expert in something. And I'm definitely not saying I'm a Counter-Strike expert, but I can, I can very, very easily spot somebody that's cheating. It's not difficult. I was talking about the premiere thing, Wayne. The stupid ass valve numbers, not the face it numbers. All right, Wayne said he played three games earlier, two cheaters on the enemy team. Next game crash, then the game hard crash, and it won't verify. So, oh, and then you got a timeout. Yeah, it's so fucking. And the crashes probably come from the people cheating because it, it affects the client in such a way that it doesn't know, it like can't handle it and it crashes. But Waifu, yeah, the, the dragon is badass, dude. I like it. I can't wait to see what else you do with it. If you put any like sponsors or numbers or anything around it, but like the, the fucking dragon is so awesome looking.
Here's Rift. New slide style driver in the server. Rocking with Theory here and throwing it down. Look at these guys, man. Hitting the bonus cones right off the bat. We're going to go over the bonus cones of this map here in a little while for those that are new. Exactly, Onion. It's like, damn, that's the other part. It's like we're older. Like, I legitimately played CS 1.6. Like, I now, I didn't play, you know, competitive. I didn't play a lot. But, like, I would get on there and do, you know, the community servers. I'd get on there and play Deathmatch and Zombie Mod and all that kind of shit. Like, I have been around the game of Counter-Strike since 1.6. I played a shitload of CS Source. Once again, not competitive, but a ton of gun game. Uh, a ton of, a fucking shitload of zombie mod on CS Source. That was the, that was like the good old days of gaming. When I was like in like middle school and early high school and like just the hours and hours and hours spent playing zombie mod on CS Source were hysterical. Um, and then of course, you know, with CSGO and now CS2, like, and, and finally over with like, I, I mean, I really didn't get hardcore into competitive Counter-Strike until COVID came around, but like, it was COVID. That was the hobby that I decided to go with when, you know, when we were locked down and all whatnot, you know, supposed to stay at home. Like, we were, me and Charlie were lucky that we were in an okay financial situation at that time. So I was just at home playing Counter-Strike constantly. So we're talking, I've got 2,000 hours in CS starting in like April of 2020. We're not, you know, it's not like I have 2,000 hours over the lifetime of CSGO. I have 2,000 hours in th four years. <laughs> and I pretty much plateaued on that like a year ago because I didn't play as much and I would only get on and play on stream with you guys for like a few hours at a time. So, I mean, we're talking over the course of two years, I amassed like 1,500, 1,600 hours. So, yeah, like anybody to come out and say like, oh, well, you, you don't know what you just suck. You don't know what you don't know when people are cheating. You just suck at the game. No, I know I suck at the game, but I also know I'm legit and I know what I'm, you know, I know the game and I know when somebody has information that they shouldn't have. And I just I hate that elitist elitist mentality when it comes to anything, you know, like I said, never set never set foot in a race car before, but. I know everything. <laughs> it's the same thing as hockey. I played hockey for 12 years. Like, did I play in the NHL? No. But am I, do I have valid opinions about the game of hockey, at, like, even at the professional level? Absolutely. I just hate it when people shit on other people's opinions because of their, like, level of experience in it. It's just so weird. Waifu's right. Lots of Mustangs this year. Well, I think because the game has... How many Mustang options does the game have, including the including the Fastback? Isn't it... Aren't there, like, four Mustangs in the game total? So there's lots of, lots of options to choose, so everybody's pretty much running the same one, but... I am super stoked for the Dodge Stealth. I know the model in the game is the, you know, 3000 GT, but... I'm going to keep calling it a Dodge Stealth and you can kiss my ass. Uh, <laughs> I am a huge fan of that. Um, and I am I am working on one, working on a build. With that, I did, uh, I put like a base level slide style, you know, set up in the same way I always do. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how it drives right off the bat. I've got some uh, gearing changes to make and some, I need to work with the shocks a little bit. But I'm really happy with the rest of it. Um, so I'm definitely going to try to get a uh, livery built for that. There's RC's S15 machine. Speaking of us, there's our fastback. We got the old school and the new school side by side here. Somebody needs to put one of these new, like, RTR style liveries on the fucking, on the fastback, man. But not just like a copy and paste from one of the other cars. I mean, like, imagine that they had done it in the 80s on the car. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would be such a cool style, like a cool look. 
Because you could do like 80s racing colors, but like with the, the new logos and everything. Some of the body kit options for the thing are freaking insane in Car X, too. I can't get over finally having the tire rubber on the on the track, man. Like it's I always felt like we did a good job with slide style and everything like that as far as how we present it and everything like that with the camera angles and the way you guys, you know, y'all build like legit super badass looking cars. You put a lot of work into delivery and your tuning and everything like that. Like I always thought we looked pretty legit as far as a competitive environment goes, but just the visuals now of Having the you know a better understanding of this, the camera angles in the game, and being able to set those up, and uh, with the Kino objects being able to add, you know, the starting line, the finish line, the bonus cones, a couple of like uh, like tire barriers just for like you know look like somewhat half-ass safety around the track, you know, some extra lines on the course, like stuff like that, just like the total visual package, and like look how the tire tracks go over top of the the custom lines that I added. Like, it's just this level of realism that's there. I mean, just look at that angle right there, that camera shot coming around that first turn. Look what it looks like here, looking up the track with the tire tracks and everything. If we, if we can get there. We're not going to get there. All right, well... Let's see what we get here. But like right here, this camera shot right here with like the tire tracks over the lines and just everything, man. You come around here, you get the cone. The tire tracks go over the cone and everything. Like, oh, it's just so, so good looking, man. Check this out. Look at this. It's beautiful. And I think the number of skid marks that the game holds on to is like perfect. So, like, as we go, you know, the older ones are erasing themselves. So, like, especially through an extended practice session like this is you see the way that the line develops and changes maybe throughout the course of the practice. And then, of course, by the time we get to the event, it's pretty much we're going to start the event with an empty, you know, clean track. And you will see throughout the event as each person, you know, driving and everything... Got the new Ferrari on course here, of course. And I think, did they use the carbon on the body? Can't, yeah, they did. The new carbon effect is really, really cool. People put so many, like, ridiculous hours worth of work into trying to make somewhat decent-looking carbon. And I remember specifically on this channel, we said two years ago that why is it not a paint type? We That was our solution to it. Uh, years ago, literally, is they have the chameleon style, they have the chrome, they have, we, and we said, why don't they just add carbon, you know, as a paint style? And that is exactly what they ended up doing, and I got to tinker around with it some on that Dodge Stealth build that I was talking about, and it really is, like, it's powerful the way it's set up. You could still do all the colors, it's not just a it's not just a copy and paste of a carbon texture onto the car. Like, it genuinely does look like the body parts are made of carbon. So we're going to be able to make some really, really cool stuff with that. I plan on using it for that stealth build. I'm not sure exactly how I want to design it yet, but I want to find a creative way to use that carbon style. Who's in the... Uh, it is Wayne. I was wondering. I had a feeling. This thing looks like the fucking Batmobile, bro. It, and this is the car you were talking about the other day, right, Wayne? I'm going to take that light flash as a yes. I mean, it's... Oh, it's my brand. 
He's like, how you gonna take my fucking car, man? He crashed it in. He said, fuck your car. <laughs> uh, that was awesome. <laughs> he said, fuck your damn car. <laughs> I know it was, what I was saying. As soon as he said, you can't take my car, you said, fuck this car. <laughs> Fire coming in with the with the data, as always. Fire's always got the information, man. That's why I love you. So it's got the X, S650, the S550, 87, and the GT350, and the Hunicorn. I forgot about the Hunicorn. So they're literally, like, the, probably the most single car, the most make and model car in the game is the Ford Mustang in all of its variations and of course highly customized variations but all right so I'm gonna watch Wayne with Tempa here with this new Ferrari machine I mean it's fast as shit but it's definitely I mean it's the speed differential is not as much as season one of slide style s15s like tempo is on your ass at the finish line right there yo for fuck's sake here it goes ah, oh he's almost flipped it <laughs> who is that han with the with the k truck <laughs> that's a good point too wayne that's a good point Filthy in the server with another fastback machine. All right, well, we're going to go check that out probably what time? What time we got here? It's probably another half hour, Wayne. We're going to switch over to our round three course because I know we've practiced this track to death as well. Plus, it's not it, the, the course isn't freaking rocket science either. The only hard part really is this uh, first bonus cone here. Speaking of which, let's take a little time. Let's take a little time to uh, look at these bonus cones for the, the new drivers and maybe new viewers that are hanging out here. Of course, uh, none of the drivers in the event, nobody but Nobody but us here on the stream, nobody but me, can see these uh, objects. Look how glitchy the camera is. This is so crazy. Hopefully the 30, 30 frames a second on the stream kind of smooths it over a little bit. But on my screen right now, it is awful. Um, but you see the, uh, the bonus cone here and the in-map lines that are on the road. You see the little triangle that's formed. So right here at the point... The point of the triangle it's in the game and as these guys come around you'll see there you go so that is bonus cone number one so basically if your rear bumper is somewhere in the ballpark of this little triangle made by the lines on the track here you'll go right through it no problem and then it smoothly extends on around as you see right here and then the second bonus cone right here in the middle of this curve so you see the red white red white red white the red that is right directly in the middle, I'll call up high here. The red that is directly in the middle. If you get your nose somewhere in the ballpark of that red, you are pretty much guaranteed. I mean, look at all the tire tracks here. Like every tire track that's on the screen right now, they got this cone. Fire says it's a Kino problem. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't doubt that for a second. So is it not doing it on consoles is what you're saying? So, like, as I come back over these cars, yeah, I don't know if you guys can see it, but the, oh, y'all have to be able to see that. Oh, it's so bad. It looks like the guys are lagging, like, really bad. It looks like a, it looks like when you played Halo in 2002 and somebody had shitty internet. Like, that's what these guys look like. Y'all remember that? I don't know if y'all are older, old enough to remember that. Playing Halo online, Halo PC in, like, 2002, 2003, and somebody had, like, 300 ping and their character moved around looking like this. 
This is what they moved like. And you imagine how hard it is to shoot somebody that's doing this shit. Uh, <laughs> But that is exactly what it looks like. But we know they're not lagging like that because we can come here. And watch this. I mean, look how smooth now. Perfectly smooth. So it's just the drone camera. Uh, well, see, that's the thing, though, Fire. Kino is up to date. Uh, it's just because they had... Their last update was targeted for the PTR version of the game, so they have a, like addressed all of the updates to the base game uh, with the mod. They just haven't released a uh, an updated version to match the current version number. Um, but from what I understand in the Kino Discord, um, everything should be fine. That's now that was what I I, I last read that a few days ago before before slide style on Sunday. Um, but I, I'm sure if there is an issue with the drone cam because of Kino, they would have uh, identified it by now. Uh, but the guys that have it on console, I mean, do y'all have the same problem? Or I also need to rebuild my uh, 180. I love that car. Just, I love the, the way it sits, the, the weight of it, the way it drives. Because uh, you all know I always put that twin turbo V6 in, in everything. Uh, I just, I love the way it feels with that in it. Like, it's a, it just drives freaking awesome. They just, with the last update when they fixed the car, which I didn't know there was anything wrong with the car until that update came out where they redid the, the body design, like the model of the 180. And yeah, the old one was just wrong. Like, the, the proportions of the car were not correct, because I see a bunch of these in our pure stock division at South Boston, or a, a bunch of, uh, well, they're 240s, the, the American model, but it's, you know, the same car. Um, and, yeah, now that I've seen a lot of them, and then I see the, the change that they made in-game, oh, my God, the old one was just wrong. The proportions of the car were just incorrect. Uh, <laughs> So I love the uh, the updated one. I need to redo my livery design for it and reset all of my, you know, redo my tune and everything, get the car set up. But I, I do love that machine. I love I love that one. I love the uh, the 300. I love the the Dodge, as I said earlier, the Dodge Stealth. Yeah, it's weird because I like if you think about it, they're all older cars. Like I'm really not up on the. Uh, not, I mean, an S15 is technically pretty old at this point too. But I mean, I'm not up to date on the more like the modernish, like all the the new Mustangs, everything like that. Like the more modern. I, I now obviously the BRZ. I am a fan of that, but that's because I've got one in the driveway. But like outside of that, like I definitely like the. Uh, little bit older, I guess the 90s rides a little bit but they gotta have a badass body kit it can't look like a 90s car like it's i want a 90s frame but that shit's gotta have it's gotta be looking like a spaceship that's kind of my like the style <laughs> 90s car with the spaceship body kit on it looking like a damn <laughs> with the crazy livery like the whole like the whole deal. That's kind of the the style I would go for if I was gonna to build out a drift car. I'm definitely I, I can't wait to work on the the stealth build though. And I'm thinking about doing like murdering it out. Like doing it all like black, like gloss black carbon. And like all of the the vinyls on it, like of course I'll do like the OIS logo and the slide style logo and everything, but them being like like the the body panels being like gloss black, and all of the vinyls being flat, like matte black, you know that type style. Like I'm kind of thinking about doing that with it. 
to, I mean, obviously to sell the point that I like a Dodge Stealth. It's, you know, stealth, like a stealth fighter, huh? Slides, this is, so that's the thing. I hate that I can't have, see the little thing that's over top of the car where it says your name? It used to be when you were on this camera, but you like got rid of the interface or whatever, like you got rid of the HUD, like through Kino at least, it would still show their name over top of the car. And I don't have that anymore. So when you guys don't have like your windshield banner and stuff, which by the way, Filthy, yours looks awesome. Um, but yeah, not having that, I don't know who's in what car. And I could just leave this up, but, you know, I try to, I, you know, the whole point of slide style is to, to, even in practice now, I want the, broad, now obviously not when I'm talking, but, like, I want the, the broadcast style to come across, you know, like it's a professional event at all times, even in practice. You know, it's not a Twitch stream, it's not a video game. You know, I try to come with that level of presentation. Especially after this weekend, speaking of which, shout out to myself. Uh, if you head on over, if y'all have a Facebook, I know I try to avoid it like the plague, but if y'all have a Facebook, uh, South Boston Speedway, if y'all look up South Boston Speedway, today they posted a, uh, it's a flag to flag 75 lap late model stock car race from uh, last Saturday. Uh, absolutely incredible race, uh, it, it just top to bottom, but if you want to see what I do on a, uh, that's my, that's my job. That's what I do on the weekends. Uh, go check that out. South Boston Speedway on Facebook. And the video was posted, uh, this, this morning, but it is flag to flag. So you can see my, what I do the, as a producer there, you know, check out the, of course, check out the racing action, but the. You know, I've got all of my graphics and everything that I do for slide style. Same thing there. Everything that you see on the screen, completely coded, written by me from scratch. Um, and I'm telling the camera guys, you know, what I need to see and everything like that. Now, they are, they were a little bit shaky. You know, it's it's been, you know, about seven, six, seven months for those guys since they were last on a camera. So we're getting back in the swing of things. So they're going to, they're going to smooth it out. We'll get, and we've also got a our tripods are a little wonky, so we're going to get that squared away and help those guys out because it's not their fault. They're tiny little cameras, so it's hard to keep them smooth. But you can definitely check out the overall broadcast quality. You guys know what I try to bring. Uh, what I try to bring when it comes to you know the the visual quality of the show. So imagine me doing it with professional equipment in real life. You know what I'm saying? Like I get to do this on Twitch with a video game on my computer. And, you know, I got my little graphics program or whatever. Um, but imagine, you know, if I can do this or the level of quality that I try to bring to slide style, imagine me having the opportunity to do it with real shit. Uh, so I'm pretty proud of myself and the guys, what we did. I'm proud of the drivers. The racing was incredible. Um, the, our commentators did a great job telling the story. Uh, it just everything about it was a, an incredible show. Uh, decent amount of fans that came out, even though there was a, a Cars Tour race. Uh, only a few hours away that Dale Jr. was running in. Uh, if, of course, the first race this year, I've been at every Cars Tour race this year, the first one that I have to miss is one that Dale Jr. is in. Um, but I'm sure he'll be there for uh, North Wilkesboro. No, North Wilkesboro next month, so I'll get to hang out. Um, but anyway, well, Onion, I mean, of course, it's a public page, so if you just, like, if you just Google South Boston Speedway Facebook, you should be able to uh, to see the stuff. Dale Jr. was not going for a W uh, last Saturday. That's for damn sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, old boy was riding around to the back. Uh, <laughs> every time cup drivers come out, or even former cup drivers come out to run against uh, the the current top level late model stock guys, they don't even hold a candle to them. Even current NASCAR Cup Series drivers are like not even in the ballpark against these guys. That's how good they are. How good the competition is. I mean, I, I tell everybody it's the best stock car racing in the world by a freaking long shot. But, yeah, Junior didn't have a – he didn't have a great day. And uh, old boy Landon Huffman, his car has been driving like hot garbage. 
uh, all year long. Kind of feel bad for those guys at this point, honestly, because, I mean, they're doing everything they can, but something's fucked up with their car just in general. Uh, so instead of playing the uh, – playing the game with the tire wear and fuel saving and everything like that and you know making the whole i think it was 125 lap race instead of making the whole race or whatever um landon said fuck it we're just gonna push it like 20 laps into the race it drove all the way up to the front led some laps uh but then his tires just like started coming apart so he you know slid on to the back and then after a restart uh junior no, I mean, knowing that uh, and on a restart, wanted to make up some positions, went to uh, push into a corner three wide on the inside. And whoever the spotter for the car on Landon's outside did not relay that information to him at all. So he drove down in the corner. He drove down in the corner almost like Landon wasn't there from the video that I saw. Um, I'd have to see the, the replay from the, the, the broadcast to see if they caught it, which I doubt they did because it was literally four cars from the back of the field, like on a restart. So I know personally I wouldn't be asking my camera guys to look at that shit uh, myself. So I would not blame them if they missed that entirely. Um, but from what I saw, that's basically what happened. So, yeah, Junior got a little – no, but it didn't tear the car up too bad. But, yeah, he, he kind of just got to hang out and ride around in the back. But I hope he had fun. That's what it's all about for somebody like him. Obviously, he's not out here trying to prove anything. He's Dale Earnhardt fucking Jr. Jack says, how do I join? Exclamation point slide style, my friend. Find out everything you need to know about the event. You can check out all of the regulations for these cars, how they're set up, what the spec rules are, and everything like that. We can even tell you right here about some of it. You see there on the right side of your screen the general setup for these machines, and that's it. There's there's no fine print, no nothing. Everything that you're seeing on the screen right there, those are the specs for the cars. Uh, there is a very short list of banned vehicles, but they're just they're not drifting vehicles. Essentially, it's you know it's the 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 big rig truck. Not that I'm saying you can't drift in these, but just. For competitive drifting, it's, you know, the big rig truck, the Jeep Cherokee, the Dodge van, you know, all of that type stuff. Like, those are the banned vehicles. But otherwise, I mean, this is pretty much the entire, this is it. These are the rules. But uh, definitely check out the regulations if you want to be a part of what we've got going on for slide style here. Get your car built out. Make sure it's in spec. Get a screenshot of it. Post it there in the sign-up form. We can get you your driver role, and you will be able to access the password for the server and come hang out with these guys. But that's what it's all about. Exclamation point slide style is where it's at. But for those that are just joining for the first time, these are the specs that these cars are built off of on the right side of your screen. And while we're looking at information on the right side of the screen, we can go on and check out the calendar for the rest of the season. Red Rings coming at you. We're live for practice right now, but April 21st is where it's going to be. That's this coming Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be headed to Silverstone, May 5th. Of course, in game, that is San Pelezo or Palizzo, Palezzo, San Pelezzo, uh, either way. It's Silverstone. St. Petersburg, May 19th, Marinello. That is Springstone in the game. Marinello is where that... It's the most similar location. I looked it up. It's pretty, uh, they're pretty damn close. It's definitely not the exact same, but you can tell that's what they were going for. June 2nd, going to be that one. And then June 16th, we are in Los Angeles. One of our favorite lines there. We'll be hanging out in LA before the mid-season break, before we come back to the mountains of Japan. In ring after that, Irwindale, and then back to Japan for Ebisu, and then King of Slide Style, which is location to be determined. That is the schedule for the season. Of course, all this can be found as well as all of the lines for each course on that Slide Style Discord that we mentioned earlier. But here in about 20, 30 minutes, Damn, that Ferrari looks badass right there. Got the badge on it and everything. Check that out. It's 
Johnson machine. Who's got that? Wayne, Wayne got that one hooked up. But we will be headed over to that Springstone line here in about a half hour to see what round three is going to be all about. And you want to talk about a line. I mean, this line looks really, really cool with the, uh, the track rubbering in over time. But, man, that one is going to look absolutely incredible. That long sweeping first turn. You see here, perfect launch procedure between Han and Rift here. Chase car lined up on the inside of the first turn. One car length ahead of the lead car. The chase car is the control car for the start. They begin rolling first. Once they start moving, that lead car can then take over and pass them on the outside. The chase car, of course, does not want to let up their momentum. They don't want to get on the brakes. They just don't want to floor it because, of course, they are the chase car. If they make it to the first turn first, I mean, we're going to have to be talking about a little bit of a, well, I guess we'll just treat it the same as a, a contact penalty. But, of course, we've never even had that happen because it's pretty obvious not to do that <laughs> in a competitive environment. We'll see here, Filthy and Temple, you'll see here, Temple rolls forward. They go almost at the same time. That's the other thing is these guys know each other so well. I mean, the instant that that chase car starts moving, the lead car is on it. But you can see how perfectly into the first turn both of these guys go. And that's the benefit of... Uh, Something like slide style, of course, this is events are, are wide open for anybody to join and be a part of, but it, it truly is its own little community. And it's definitely a group of friends going out, putting on a show time after time. So these guys get so many runs in with each other and they know each other so well. And it, it really adds to the overall level of competition as well, because these guys are pushing each other to be better and better and better every single event. And it absolutely shows every time. You know, it's much like watching, you know, something like FD, where it's the, the same group of drivers, same team, same group of guys, and they travel all over the world together. I mean, they're they're going to hang out. They're going to eat together and, and work on each other's cars and help the other teams out. And there's travel and hotels and... All of the things that, you know, they're spending all this time. NASCAR is the same way. IndyCar, Formula One, these guys spend their lives together. Even though they're competing on track, they're like a family off track. And it is, slide style is the exact same way. A lot of esports make it a uh, little bit more difficult to have that camaraderie because you, you know, there's so many people involved in esports and you don't necessarily gain those friendships that you do and so many more people being involved with a tight-knit community like we have here for Slidestyle. Great seeing these guys always having fun. And, of course, all of that is in that Discord server, so definitely check it out. If this is something that you think would be fun and interesting for you to be a part of, of course, Slidestyle by itself, what we're all about, freestyle tandem, tandem drifting. It's our own little brand of competitive drifting we have here. No clipping zones, no track limits, no judges. All of the voting for the events is done by the crowd, by the viewers watching on Twitch. There are no judges. And any penalties that may need to be hand out for any contact where a driver knocks another driver off their line. We love contact between cars. We love guys scraping the wall. We love guys pushing the limits with their cars. But if another driver unfortunately does make a mistake, and knock another driver off their line. Of course, we have rules for how penalties are doled out there. But those are those are handed out by me personally. And they're, you know, if you watch our events, it, it only happens. I, we may have one, I, I'd say like one every other event where a mistake is made and, it, you know, it causes a collision with another driver to the point where we would need to Hand out a penalty on the voting. But it's usually just blatantly obvious, or even a situation like a controller disconnect, you know what I mean? It is, it is blatantly obvious, you know, there's no ticky-tack calls here. 
It's all about having fun. You know, it's not serious competition by, by any means. Tofi, if you're still hanging out earlier, had to take a break away from the stream real quick. Threw, uh, threw the new uh, theme song on. Official, official intro track of Slide Style in 2024. Everybody jamming to the, to the tune there, but that is uh, that is Miss Tofi's song. So y'all uh, give the props there every time you hear it. It is a fucking banger of a song. By like absolutely, and it is perfectly fitting of what we've got going on here. I'm, I'm digging the, the windshield banner there. See, that's the, even though we, when we talked about it last event with the, the name and numbers being non-negotiable as far, you know, as far as placement or whatever, the way you've got the number set up there, it's easily readable and it, it fits the design style that you've chosen and everything. Like, I, zero problems with, with that right there. Wayne, take a mental note of that. <laughs> the way that Filthy's number is on his is, like, perfect. Of course, Theory and Wayne, as we see them on your screen right now, I mean, that is perfection as far as what we, we look for in a windshield banner here in Slide Style. Is, as you see, these guys are able to do whatever they want with the background. We're trying to mimic the Slide Style logo up there in the top left of your screen. Han and Slides talking about resetting mid-runs. Now, that is something that, of course, during an actual slide-style event is definitely not appreciated because uh, we try to treat it as realistically as possible. But uh, during practice, it's not the end of the world. Especially if, you're, if, if a driver's trying to get something right with their tune. I mean, sometimes you know if you went the wrong way on an adjustment, you're two turns into it, you're like, this shit is wrong. Uh, definitely uh, not a huge deal by any means. Now, if you are tandeming with somebody, now keep in mind, they are practicing too. So even if your car may not be doing what you want it to do, you know, maybe to finish out the run with your dance partner there would be uh, appreciated. But uh, not a huge deal during practice, of course. But just as a reminder for everyone, during a slide style event, of course, we attempt to treat it exactly as if it were real life. Um, and you can't teleport your car back to the starting line in real life. So we ask that nobody ever resets. Now, unless you turn upside down, I believe Waifu managed to get a car up and over the wall and upside down. Uh, huge shouts out to Waifu, by the way, in that situation. He waited until I got, because my camera, he was the lead car for that run, and I was locked to his car. He waited until I got my camera off the car and was on the replay before he reset. So huge shouts out to him for that. I really appreciate that as well. Great thinking, because uh, I didn't even think to say that uh, during our driver's meeting or anything. I always just say, hey, try not to reset unless you flip over or you get stuck inside of something on the map, then of course reset. But uh, he made sure to wait until after the, uh, after he was off camera for that. So really appreciate that from a, a broadcasting standpoint. Excited for this next slide style event. I'm excited for every slide style event, but this past one, of course, I got home uh, the previous, well, that morning, I got home from the racetrack at 5 a.m. talking about that that race that got posted that I was saying you should go definitely check out if you want to see what I've got going on on the weekends. But after that race was over, of course, hanging out with everybody, 
afterwards and, you know, breaking all of my stuff down and packing everything away and all of that. But I ended up, you know, not getting home until 5.30 in the morning. So I got, you know, maybe four or five hours sleep. Woke up, had to get everything ready for, for slide style. So I definitely was... Uh, we had a great show. Of course, I had some technical issues on my side of things, but we were able to get through it and had a great event. The drifting action was incredible, as always, just as we expected, especially to start off the season. But, you know, wasn't able to necessarily bring the, the level of energy that I would like to from the commentary side of things. And I was, I mean, you know, you guys know I don't like a... I don't like when things don't work, especially with code that I wrote. It's, well, to me, it's embarrassing. I know nobody gives a shit, you know, the people watching along. I know nobody cares about that stuff. They're just having fun and enjoying the show. But, you know, I to me, it's embarrassing because I spent all this time writing this code and then something like that happens, you know, live, things break, don't work, or whatever. So to me, you know, I, I get a little frustrated with it. But, of course, try to be professional and keep that locked down during the event. But, uh, you know, being so tired... And I, I think I got a little bit of food in me right before we started. You know, just not making excuses, but just, you know, that's the situation. This next race, next Saturday, is going to be a day race for us at South Boston. So I should be home like 9 or 10 o'clock at night. Like, I should be home at a reasonable time, be able to get things prepared the night before, get a good night's sleep, wake up, get some food, jump in these guys early, jump in here with these guys for practice early. Uh, you know, like before noon, maybe even my time and get everything buttoned up and ready to go. And like I said, I'll be able to eat some food and have bring that level of energy after a good night's sleep. I am very excited for this next event. Onion says I judge for every hiccup. See, that's the fun part, too, though, is is a lot of you guys have been here for every Every step of the way, every step of the process, uh, especially some of the OG OG guys that have been here since the very, very first slide style event. Uh, spoiler alert, the very, very first one, we didn't even know slide style was a thing. We just had a tandem comp and it was a clusterfuck and it was amazing and it was a lot of fun. But uh, it was definitely a clusterfuck. And then we decided, we were like, hey, we can do something with this and kind of grandfathered that event in as the first round of slide style. But uh, you guys have watched this grow from a competition standpoint and from a, you know, a broadcast standpoint from the very beginning. So it's kind of fun because normally, you know, if y'all were watching like say FD or something like that on TV and uh, there was some kind of technical hiccup you might not notice it because you don't know what to expect from the show. You don't know what they had planned. You just are watching what they're showing you. And, of course, they have great technology and they're professionals uh, doing a good job with what they do. So if they have technical issues with something, you may not ever even know about it. But on my side of things, you guys have seen it from the very, 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 very beginning. Like, Every pixel of everything I've done has been documented with you guys from the start. So when something does go wrong, y'all know it. So <laughs> it is definitely a little bit more unique there. But it's been a lot of fun doing the stuff, uh, the short track racing stuff at South Boston, for example, because like now, you know, my parents, who have been short track racing fans their entire lives pretty much, but now that they've got the inside scoop, I'm telling them stories. They know about my... Uh, my program and everything like that, everything that's going on, like they, they understand like the behind the scenes of what's going on. So they know what little things to look for, but it's so funny now because I'll sit and watch like a, a NASCAR cup series race, like with my dad and he will like, will both at the same time be start bitching about something that they do on the show as far as like what the camera's on or something their graphics are doing or whatever. We're like, why is it like that? That sucks, a piece of shit. What are you doing? Like, and it's so funny because like five, 10 years ago, we would have never noticed it or dad would have never noticed it, you know? And now that I've been doing that and he's been learning about the my side of what I'm doing, oh, he's picking the NASCAR broadcast apart. It's hilarious. I love it so much.
Wayne, what the hell are you doing in the damn Discord? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, did he get back on his wheels? No, and then, see, so yeah, because I, I cut to the other camera because I have to do it anyway. I still need, need to figure that out. That's hilarious. His car almost flipped back over. I'm watching it. About 10 minutes left here in this first practice session here. Red ring for round two. We will do a little practice for round three here. Change things up, head on over to Silverstone. Plan on having one more practice tomorrow night probably be a little bit shorter uh, than tonight's practices. I do have to get up early Friday morning to head to the racetrack. So uh, it'll probably only be an hour or two just to make sure everybody's tunes and everything's buttoned up. Anybody that has any questions about anything or anything like that, we'll make sure that's all set. If it is a Kino thing with that drone camera, they can get it fixed. It is going to get pretty repetitive watching all of practice off the same cameras and then watching the actual event off the cameras. I like to do the drone camera for the majority of practice if I can. Ah, you're doing just fine, Skull. Just got to get back in the swing of things. A little while. There you go. First bonus cone hooked up. Skull picking up speed on the long swinging S bend here. Gets the next one. Got it with the back bumper, but he did get the second bonus cone there. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh my god. That's funny. We're going to try to get this pronunciation right. I always get made fun of. Is it Nakimux? Lucky looks. What's going on? Welcome, welcome. A little practice action going on here. For Sunday slide style event.
Wayne, have you tried to see what that would look like with carbon under it yet? I don't know if you do like me and like where your car is all black on like most of my designs, that's actually vinyl so that I can change it without having to, you know, pay the stupid in-game money or whatever. There's no point. If you're going to change your car from, like, green to blue, you should not have to fucking pay for it. That's kind of dumb. Um, so I just set the car color as, like, a flat gray um, on all of my cars, and then I wrap it with whatever base color. So I don't know if you did it that way, but if, if you didn't do it that way and the base paint is black, Your your design with the with the new carbon shit might look cool. It might look like shit. But it might look cool. So it is a buy, I got you. Yeah, that's how I've always done mine. Well, and with the carbon stuff, I'm going to do the same thing. What I'm probably going to do is, like, where I've been doing the flat gray for all of my cars as a base, I'm probably just going to do, like, a slightly lightened up carbon as the base for all of my cars. And then I'll just, you know, do the all of the design over top of that. So if I want to show carbon, I just leave that part of the car naked, essentially. Awesome. Is that that new, the other new paint style type that's underneath there? Because that looks awesome. It almost looks like you're like looking into a galaxy or something from at least from my camera angles. Oh, Tempest is just vinyls too, okay. Nobody really working on the with the new stuff yet. Alright, what's well, about that time for us to switch maps over? I'll let you guys get a couple more runs in here. Of course, anybody that wants to keep making runs here on Red Ring, if they're working on a tune or anything like that, I am just gonna do a map vote to kick us over to the next one. Um but anybody that wants to hang out here and keep working on their cars, keep making runs with anybody, of course, you guys can always make a new lobby and then post it in the lobby's channel on the Slide Style Discord. Keep it rolling, but I'm going to let these guys rock a quick lead and a chase here real quick, and then we will switch over. Skull and Waifu are going to be the last run here. Plus, I'll allow for a little bit of stream delay for anybody that's not listening in uh, the Discord right now. We'll leave a little uh, little stream delay there. Let y'all get prepared so I'm not switching over maps on you in the middle of a run. But we're going to get ready to do that. Very quickly on, uh, on stream, we'll go to a, a short little, little break screen. So we'll switch maps and then come right back here in just a second. So uh, don't go anywhere. Slide style on your screen at the moment. 
We will be coming right back with some practice for round three of this season. Over on Silverstone, so don't go anywhere. We will be right back here in just a minute. Of course, right when, right when I come back in, whoever I was watching disconnects and it kicks me back to my car and freezes. Um, welcome back. Slide style practice here. Checking out our line for round three. Pretty frustrated with uh, Kino right now for whatever reason. It did not save any of my custom objects for this track. So a couple hours of work down the drain there. So as much as... Uh, Kino does great work with a lot of things here in Car X. Big shouts out to them for that. Thanks for wasting my fucking time. Uh, so I'll have to redo that. Um, but we will go over our round three course here. We'll talk about where the bonus cones are supposed to be. Even though I have those set up, but they are no longer there. fly around here a little bit. I don't think any of my skybox changes saved either. What the fuck, man? None of my stuff saved. That's extremely frustrating, man. Like, I had everything ready to go and set up perfectly. Either way, all right. Bonus cone number one. Where the blue, the blue paint here on this concrete on the outside of the track, you see this angled line, this blue paint here comes up. And when it meets up with the asphalt on the outside of the track right here, on the inside of the white line. So can I get my mouse? Nope, no mouse on the screen. So right, right here, I'll zoom right in. The bonus cone is going to be right here. So this is the spot for the cone. So we'll zoom out. 
right where that person just drove through, whoever that was, just drove right through it. So that's the location for the first cone. Of course, you can see that. I mean, it's pretty damn hard to miss. If you miss that first cone, you're basically mission, missing the initiation for the first turn. So as you see all the tire tracks here, that's the location of the first cone. Basically, everybody should be getting that one. If you miss it, something's very wrong. But that's there to make sure nobody's doing anything too funky with the initiation of the first turn. Of course, they're welcome to if they want to. Bonus cone's completely optional. And then the second cone is very, very easy. This first little corner marker here, the 50 board. Of course, you can't see that on the other side, but the 50 board here, it's on the inside of the white line from the 50 board. So lined up here with this, but on the inside of the white line there is where that bonus cone will be sitting. Those are your two bonus cones on this course. So we'll come around and see here if these guys manage to hit this one. And that would most definitely be a hit there. Not a hit for the chase driver, but the lead driver's the only one that matters. Then swinging around here for the finish. The finish of the course. Of, of course, we don't have a hard finish line in slide style but for the the visual of the the stream we do have one so it extends across from uh where this little side road comes out where the asphalt meets right here and there's a little corner that's the finish line straight across this direction and of course i have you know with the kino objects i have a finish line little inflatable thing that goes across the top there so I will get all that stuff back in pretty, like I said, pretty frustrated with the fact that none of that saved. I'm not sure why that is. I've never had a problem with it on the first two maps. We will get that done. For those of you practicing on this course for the first time, make sure your return path back to the starting line is takes place through the grass over here on the right side. It swings you back around on the concrete over here to head back to the start. And of course, the start is directly underneath this giant metal great thing so that is the starting line start set up just like this right here perfect start for these two let's see how their initiation is into the first turn rock solid there all the way around and I have got to get off of this drone cam because the lag is going to give me a headache hopefully this can get fixed as well as soon as possible So we'll get all those issues fixed. Of course, we've got a little while here, a few weeks before this event. This is going to be round three for this season. Map for this course can be found. In the slide style discord, as long as as well as the location of the start, finish and the bonus cones. Yogi's here. Yogi, what's going on? He said he took he took the cones. That's where everything went. He took it all home with him. I believe that's Wayne and the, the old school looking Batmobile and skull there face and all. Looking good. Take a look at him with Theory here. Theory going to be in the lead. Right in the pocket heading into the first turn here. Having that Rubber on track definitely makes a huge difference here, being able to see this line develop, see how wide these guys start taking this third turn here as they transition back around into the final swing. Just for, uh, just for reference on this final turn as we watch slides go through it here, Try to extend your last drift if you can. Well, we'll see. We'll look at Filthy here. Try to extend your last drift 
as you come across all the way through this extended part right there to where filthy is right now onto this little straightaway because that is where that finish inflatable overhead finish line thing of course and the checkered finish line on the track is going to be i know it is just practice but uh just so you guys can kind of get in the habit of that we'll see here is wayne and skull skull up on two wheels manages to hang on to it and get back to the door of wayne in the ferrari machine incredible but as these guys loop around here you'll see wayne three wheel in that ferrari and skull right on the door but as these guys extend it all the way back out exactly like that that is exactly what i was talking about for the uh, finish of the course there that's exactly what i'm looking for so those watching along that's what we're aiming to do here Filthy, this one's a tough one for sure. It's definitely, uh, it looks simple at first, but it's just very, you have to be very, very precise. This first turn is so high speed. Whoa, big glitch there between these two. First turn is so high speed, and then you have to hit the perfect apex as you transition into that second curve. The third turn's so wide open because it's just open asphalt before you get set up for this final long sweeping more than 180 degree final turn so it, it, the, the course seems simple as could be at first but the the little details of this one make it extremely difficult Watch Wayne take this one on super high speed in that Ferrari. Three wheeling all the way. Standing out that final turn. That's exactly what we're looking for. And as, as these guys continue to do that through practice, you'll see that line rubber in more as well. May lift this final camera up in the air a little bit more. But the idea was to have it low here to show the speed and the proximity between the two cars. So I do kind of like it. But I think the more we run this line, especially for the drivers that also have their the skid marks on the graphics turned all the way up. Uh, as we'll start to see this line develop a bit more, that third turn, as I said, I think we'll start to see it get more of a, uh, a specific area. But of course, that's the beauty of slide style. The lead driver has a prerogative to go wherever they like to go. They can run it as shallow as they want, as deep as they want, whatever direction. You see so many different options being taken through that section we're looking at right now. But then it all, everybody collapses back into the same line through this final portion here. So we'll take a look at Wayne and Filthy off the uh, start here. I think we got our uh, odd starting set up there. I really don't think it's that bad, Wayne. Like, these guys aren't that far behind you and a lot of the guys you've been running with have not run this line a lot it's definitely fast but like i said it's it's still not as fast as the speed difference in our season one s13s it's really not that bad and you're definitely not getting as much angle as some of these other guys so i i think in a in a chase that might could sway some votes I mean, it is a, a high-speed car on a high-speed track. I mean, it's, these guys have the same 
available car selection as anyone else so they could choose the Lamborghini, they could choose the Porsche, they could choose the Ferrari. Any of those incredibly light, incredibly rigid vehicles, I mean, these guys could definitely make those decisions. It would be up to them if they want to run the car that they are most used to and most comfortable with, or if they want to try to take advantage of the high speed of the course and make a, a switch to another vehicle. That is yet again, another part of the, the creativity of, of slide style is to I mean, how many drifting drivers in the world have over 100 cars at their fingertips that they could select and completely customize for any given event? Definitely one of the benefits of the esports world. I mean, Skull, it sounds to me off the start, if the car is gaining that many, if you, if you know you're not in a Ferrari and you're lined up next to a Ferrari, it sounds to me like the chase car needs to just haul ass straight off the line, let, not let up. Maybe even a little gamesmanship. I wouldn't be mad about it. To, as the chase car, to, to flash your lights. The other car flashes their lights, but the chase car decides when to go. Sit there for a fucking second. <laughs> don't, you know, don't, don't flash your lights. They flash your lights back and you go. Flash your lights, they'll flash back. Okay, we're both ready. Sit for a minute. And then hit it and don't let up. Now you run the risk of if you beat them to the first turn, I mean, that, like I said earlier, that, that could get into the realm of being a, a vote penalty. However, I'm also, as you know, as the person that gives out those penalties, I am definitely not about to just let the, you know, the lead car sandbag the run either. I mean, the lead, the chase car's job is to chase, and the lead car's job is to lead. This event is about having fun, as always, so the expectation is for those two things to happen. Like, I don't give a shit what happens during the run, but the lead car is going to lead and the chase car is going to chase. <laughs> That's just how we're doing this, man. Um, so, I mean, definitely, if, if you feel that there's a, a speed advantage off the launch with the other car, I mean, when you're in the chase position, look to mitigate that as much as you can. And in the, in the lead position, of course, you control the pace of the course here. That is, that's the whole point. Supra, another example of a car that could probably have a hell of a lot of speed to it. And that's, a, that's another benefit of, of slide style is, you know, we were talking about earlier, it's all S15s and Mustangs. Well, hey, maybe when we come to round three, we'll have to force people out of their comfort zone because we'll have two or three guys in Porsches and Ferraris and all these different builds. And everyone else will say, man, if I want to have a shot, I'm going to need to try something different. Filthy's talking about the uh, the start over here. So the start is in the middle. That's how we always do it, is in the middle of the track uh, on every course so that there's no question. Uh, we'll see when Wayne and uh, Wayne and Skull get back to the start here, if y'all can hook it up for me and don't go anywhere. All right, so the as always, the lead car is on the, the outside. We'll go on and pull up our little info box here as well. The uh, lead car, for anybody that's new watching Filthy, I know you don't need to know this, but for anybody that's watching along really quickly, 
the uh, lead car is on the outside of the first turn. So in this case, that's going to be the right side because the, the first turn is a long sweeping left hander. So this is going to be the setup right in the middle. Like the imagine if there was a line drawn in between the two cars, that line is in the middle of the track. So think about like a, a, a road in your neighborhood. The yellow lines down the middle of the road need to be in between the two cars. The lead car is one car length back from the chase car. The chase car is in control of the start. That would be Wayne in this instance. So Wayne has control of the start. He can take off whenever he wants. As soon as he starts moving, you will see Skull take over on the outside. Both drivers will initiate into the first turn. And away they go, just like that, side by side into the first turn. So the uh, the start for every, every, every single uh Every single one is that same same setup. It only switches which side is lead and which side is chased based on the first turn of the course. But we can kick over really quickly here to our drone camera. Now we do have this big structure here. This is the starting line. But if you want to get real specific, there is a fence post that is right here in the middle of it. If you really, really want to get specific, when I draw my, my green starting line on the track with the Kino objects, like I said earlier, that would be here. However, it just decided not to save it. I don't know why. But uh, that green line would be right up the center here. So filthy here. If he were going to be in the chase position, lines up just slightly to the one side of the track lead car on the other side see this not a good starting setup at all right here that is definitely not a good starting setup we'll see here with Wayne and Skull they are a full car length and a half ahead of the starting line but they did get the shape of it proper The big giant steel structure here, you can't miss it. The middle of that is the starting line. If you go up here in space and look straight down through it. Can I get my mouse to come up here? No. There we go. The line, the magical line would be right here on the mouse. And then the middle of the road, you can almost see there's a darker section through the middle of the road here. So there's the line. So the Wayne being the lead car, we need to back up exactly one car length from where he's at right now. There we go. So that's your start right there. Perfect. Frost, what's going on? I got to catch up on the chat. We we're talking about the start. Adrenix is here. What's going on with you? Mastiff is here as well. Appreciate all my peeps coming to hang out for a little while. What's going on, guys? Had to get straight with everybody on the, the starting procedure. Make sure everything is, because uh, I don't want the guys to get too used to, you know, get in the habit of doing something the wrong way, practicing it in the wrong spot or something like that. So I want to make sure we got the start line in the right spot so it's in the middle of the steel structure and in the middle of the track is where we are supposed to be here so filthy is in the perfect spot a little far ahead but in the perfect spot can't beat it doesn't have to be exactly perfect either but i don't want you guys to be way way off
Uh, Drake, yeah, man, it's been it has been hella busy, and I can't talk about any of it yet. But I've got even more stuff now that is is starting to roll up. Uh, a couple of projects that I am being brought in to work on that I am going to be almost putting in full time hours week to week on this race and stuff. Uh, I'm very, very lucky. I'm very excited about those things. And it's pretty awesome because I'm being tasked with like heading up the project like somebody else is fronting the, the money and getting the sponsors and everything for the idea. But they I am technically like the, I'm setting it up on a technical standpoint. So I'm very, very excited about those things. I'll be able to talk more about those uh, in the future when things are more concrete. But those things are coming up as well. I'm actually starting on those things this week. Um, so which makes it difficult. I had to get a lot of code written for SlideStyle last night to fix those bugs from our last event because I am not going to be able to work on it anymore until Sunday. Uh, no, these are brand, brand new, Wayne. Like, I found out about them. I, I knew... I knew... Uh, we have been talking about the idea for a couple weeks now, but... They finally got approval from the people we needed approval from. And I was told as of last night to like start making shopping lists. So it is brand, brand new. Very, very excited about it. Uh, oh, that schedule is quite potentially forever. Adrenix. Uh, warning with the follow up there. I appreciate that. Welcome to. A little bit of practice for slide style. We had our practice for round two, which is coming up on Sunday. A little while earlier, so we're checking out the line for round three here. Silverstone. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be the the future. That's the plan, at least, uh, if it goes well. Um, I am I am for certain at a racetrack every Friday and Saturday uh, I started in March, and until until September or October, I think October, uh, I'm at a racetrack every single Friday and Saturday, and then there's a couple of uh, midweek races sprinkled in there as well. And then, like I was saying, this you know new projects that I'm going to be working on are going to be developed, you know, on the days that I'm not at the track. Um, and I may have to travel. We'll be we'll be doing some testing and stuff on those projects at my track at South Boston. Um, so I'll probably be driving down there on you know on a Monday or Tuesday sometimes to work on that stuff as well. So at the Porsche and the Ferrari here side by side, that very well could be a pairing that you see in the finals when we get to round three. I wish we had an option. So here's another thing. So I, I we, we've we been known to talk about ideas, not that any of the CarX devs listen to us or know who we are at all, but uh, we've been known to talk about ideas and then like a year or two later, those ideas actually happen. I think I've mentioned this before, but the fact that you can change the seats in the car and like you can change the bumper, the side skirts, all these different body parts. And sometimes the option is empty. You can have no front bumper. You can have no side mirrors. You can have no rear wing. Well, you can change the seats in the car. Why is empty not an option for the seats in the car? Most race cars don't have passenger seats, just in general. We should have the option to remove. I mean, we can customize the colors and the design, and we can switch in between. We can have the driver's seat and the passenger seat be different seat designs. Why is empty not an option? And from a development standpoint, I mean, it's pretty clear they're just switching between models at a certain location inside the vehicle. It's an empty model. It literally, the only difference would, in programming would be adding to the list of, you know, things you can choose from. And it's just add empty to the list. And then what's the model that goes in its place and what colors go on it? Uh, nothing and nothing. Rift says we should also be able to change the dash and stuff. Now, that would require 
you know, all new programming because that's not something that is in the game. Now, as I, I also agree with that. My thought on that, we talked about that on stream a lot over the years as well. Uh, my thought on that is when you add a, when you add the roll cage to the car, it should the entire interior of the car should become a race car. You should have the stock interior with all of the normal gauges and, and the back seats and all of the things that you would find in a regular road car. Uh, and then when you add the roll cage, it should change the whole interior of the car to a race car. With the, you know, the firewalls, all of the interior stuff stripped out. Maybe change the gauges and things like that, you know, like all of that type of stuff. Now, obviously, that is a huge ton of modeling work, and I, I know that's asking for a lot. So I'm not just saying, oh, it would be easy to know. That would be a humongous undertaking. There's hundreds of cars in this game. Like, that would be an enormous amount of work for the developers. So I definitely do not see that happening ever. Uh, <laughs> at least in this iteration of the game, I do not see that happening. But the... Having the seat be empty from a development standpoint would be trivially simple. And it's actually possibly something that you could do within Kino as well. Obviously, I want it to be something on consoles as well, but I have noticed with the body part replacements in Kino, you can just remove a part of the car. Like, just have, like, the door of the car just be gone. Um... So it's, it's definitely possible within the engine as well. But, I mean, yeah, definitely uh, to be able to have, like, the driver or passenger seat be set to none would be uh, a pretty welcome upgrade. And I think, like I said, it should be extremely trivial for the developers in comparison to a lot of the other changes they've made. Yes, sir, Onion, have a good night, bud. It was great to see you, too, as always. Hopefully, we'll get some Counter-Strike action in at some point here. Like I said, things are about to get... I thought things were busy for me. Things are about to get a hell of a lot more busy for me. Um, but I would love to get some more Counter-Strike in. Of course, we will only be playing uh, each other. We will only be playing locally. I am not even going to consider uh, any kind of matchmaking or anything like that until... Valve makes some kind of attempt at fixing the issues going on with that. I mean, I, I enjoy the game as it plays right now. Um, I feel like the movement and shooting feels good. I think graphically the game is in a really good place. Uh, I, I still think that they need to fucking get rid of Mirage because that map has not changed. They, they changed the texture on the floor in Palace. And I think they updated the way the tarps look and they move the bench in mid. They, those are the entirety of the changes made to that map since 2013. It's embarrassing. Uh, so that shit has got to go. It, I love the, the layout of the map is not bad. It just looks like ass. It's just old as fuck. Uh, just straight up, it looks terrible. Um, the I mean, Dust got two, multiple reworks in that period of time. Nuke looks incredible uh inferno even though there's too much junk and shit on it and the, the floors are uneven so it makes throwing grenades a pain in the ass but like it's beautiful it looks great um i think uh, i mean anubis and ancient look really really good I, I think all of the maps look good except for Mirage. It just looks horrible. But it, it it's not even, because obviously that game is not about looks. That's not what Counter-Strike is about at all. But it has gotten to the point where that map looks so bad and so outdated, it is detrimental to the overall visual of the game. I mean, if you're trying to bring in new players into the world of Counter-Strike, having a map that is identical to the version from 2013 is not a great way to do it. But the, the cheating issue is just astronomical right now. And the, the disparity between players with the premiere mode and Face It and, you know, Leadify is coming up with their own version of Face It now, which is going to further split the player base, which I appreciate. 
uh, companies like that and, and you know systems like that that they have put together. I appreciate what those do for the the competitive Counter Strike community, but that's not the point. The point is, especially for new players and, and younger younger players, like a 15 year old that's looking to get into like esports, and they you know Counter Strike, in my opinion, is the pinnacle of FPS esports. I, it's the same way that for like RTS games, I mean, StarCraft is it. That's the one. StarCraft is the game. Um, so it's the, I mean, and then your your MOBA is like, you know, League is the game. Uh, Valve wishes it was Dota, <laughs> but like League is the game. So like Counter-Strike in FPS terms, that is the game for esports. So 15, 16 year old kids looking to get into, I mean, even younger than that, but technically, you know, m or whatever. But, you know, teenage kids looking to get into the game the idea, uh, you know, they shouldn't need an insanely powerful computer by any means. It should uh, a mid middle ground, run of the mill computer should be able to very easily run the game, and you should be able to get on the game and press play and play the game. There should be no other steps. You shouldn't have to. Now, I y'all know I love my config files and, and doing all the wild shit that I can do. And I think the source engine configuration abilities are second to none. And I hope they never go away. But they shouldn't be required. Everything that you can do or everything gameplay related that you can do within a config should be accessible within the options menu of the game. You know, a, a 14 year old picking up the game for the first time should be able to play on the family computer. I mean, even though on low or medium graphics, but they should be able to play on the family computer. They should be able to get on the game, press play and play the game. There should be no other steps, no third party services. They shouldn't have to look up or download any configs or anything. The game should be entirely self-sufficient and it is not that at this point. So that's my, my soapbox about Counter-Strike uh, and all of the top content creators in the world of Counter-Strike are saying the exact same thing. Um, and I'm not just saying it because they're saying it because I've been saying the shit since before CS2 even came out. We've talked about it a million times. Is what, because I, I think Face It is cool and great and everything like that, but I, I have been saying that I believe it's very unnecessary um, to the, the ecosystem that is Counter-Strike. Hero, what's going on, man? 21 months on the sub. I appreciate the support so much, man. Thank you so much. I know you can't always be here, and I know my schedule's gotten so busy. I'm not streaming as much, but I really appreciate the support, man. Love you. Glad you're here. Almost been two years. That's wild, bro. You got time to come jump in the server for a little bit. We're about to get off of here in just a little while. Probably another half hour before I hop out of here. I've got some stuff I need to work on tonight. Like I said, got that new project stuff going on. Need to work on that a little bit. He said he needs, needs to get off the game. I, f I feel you on that. I'm starting to, uh, as much as I love watching you guys and enjoying everything going on, I'm kind of thinking about all these things that I've got to get done. And I'm like, man. But I love hanging out with everybody. I hate that I only get on here, you know, once or twice a week now, so I don't get to talk to you guys that often. Here was updating the game right now. They've got a Dodge Stealth in here now, bro. I'm stoked. That's going to be my new car. I've got to build it out. I mean, it's a 3000 GT, but I'm going to call it a Dodge Stealth because they're the same car. Minor changes here and there. The Stealth did have a factory option for a turbo V6, though, and that is what I put in the car. So with the body kit and, uh, and the, the V6, the twin turbo V6 in it, I mean, mine is as close to a Dodge Stealth as you're going to get. So that's what I'm calling it a Dodge Stealth. I don't give a shit. The body kits aren't great. I'm a little disappointed with that. Um... I mean, I know the I, I, I'm asking a lot because, of course, there's, you know, however many 120 cars or 130 cars or whatever in the game. So I, I know I'm bitching because there are a lot of cars that have huge amounts of options for their body kits. Uh, but I was hoping for maybe one or two more options or at least. 
I was hoping to be able to swap between the two. I really like, I, I think the, I think the S15 is a good example. I'm trying to go off memory. I know the BRZ can, oh, no, the BRZ can't do it. The 86, I mean. Um, but like some of the cars in the game, you can pretty much just put whatever front bumper, side skirt, and rear bumper you want on it. Kind of like uh, how Need for Speed Underground used to be. You could just mix and match all of the different parts. And I understand some of the body kits are, you know, have wide bodies built in with the fender. So like certain stuff doesn't line up, but also who gives a shit if it doesn't line up? Like have a front bumper that's set for like a, an extra wide body front fender, but like the front fender is chosen by like whatever the side skirt is, for example. And like, I wish they would let us kind of hot swap all that stuff in because even though, you know, to, to each his own, some people might like some of the visual style that comes from that. Having a front bumper that's like more flared out than the rest of the body lines of the car, depending on your livery design and everything like that, you might be able to come up with a cool thing with that. But uh, that's the only thing about the uh, the new ride that bothers me is, is you get two two body kit options. You, I mean, three if you include. So you've got stock and then two body kit options. Um, and now the the front the both of the body kits come with like a lot of aero features that like it looks like a fucking Pikes Peak like a hill climb car. Like it's got all these canards and shit, all these little little things on it. Uh, but you can take those off. They do have, when you when you select the body kit and it looks like a freaking spaceship, you can go into the front bumper and then take those extra pieces. You can either make them carbon, make them paintable, or take them off. Uh, so if you go in, I, I like the body kit that I ended up with on mine. Um, and I'm gonna do my usual where I, I use some vinyls to kind of like mold what it looks like just kind of like shade some things and because there's like this fin that's on the front of the side skirt on the body kit that I chose there's this like fin in front of the front door of the car and you can't get rid of it so I'm going to try to like black out everything behind it so that it's from most view, like from most perspectives, it'll just kind of blend into the side of the car and you can't see it, you know? Filthy says he's headed out. Appreciate your great runs, man. Hope you had a fun time. Look forward to seeing you uh, possibly tomorrow. Hopefully I get a practice stream in tomorrow night. But uh, definitely on Sunday, like I said, I will be home from the racetrack Uh earlier Saturday night. Now it's still going to be 9 or 10 o'clock at night, but I'll be home earlier, so that'll be great. So I'll be able to put in a lot more work Saturday night to prepare for Sunday and get a good night's sleep. Rocket Bunny's here. We're getting ready to get out of here in just a minute. Probably another 5-10 minutes or so for me before I got to get off and go work on some other stuff. But what is up? Still haven't quite had that the opportunity or the time to be able to get on your map yet. I definitely saw the screenshots you sent. I mean, we talked about it last time, but I really do want to uh, to get on there and slide around, check out how that line flows and how it how it feels. Can't wait to see what updates you get as you start adding props and things like that to it. Wayne and Cruz getting after it here, of course. This map last year, Cruz first ever event win. Correct me if I'm wrong, I do, but memory memory serves. I believe this was Cruz's map. J Star has returned. Welcome back. But uh Cruz grabbing the victory here.
<laughs> Got you, Wayne. Yeah, I mean, I, I the way I see it with this map versus our other map, my other maps is usually we want to, you know, head into the first turn, like already door to door going into the first turn. Um, with this one, I almost think you want the lead driver to get physically in front of the chase driver before getting into the first turn. You know, more like what you would see, like watching uh, FD in Long Beach or whatever, kind of how they get into the first turn. Like, that's kind of how I feel like, like what, what Skull and Theory just did right here. Like, that's kind of how I expect the first turn to go with this line. Like, what they're doing is basically exactly what I look for on this line. Like, um, and I was right earlier with what I said about the, uh, the tire tracks kind of zoning in on a certain area in that third turn. Riff, you've been doing great, man. Been enjoying watching you. I appreciate you joining in with us. Sorry if you haven't got very much uh, screen time. I try to, to showcase everyone as equally as I can. We got Cruz and Skull here on one, but that's kind of what I'm talking about right there, where the lead car is like physically in front of the chase car before getting into the first turn. On any other track, we kind of don't want that, but it, it this line, the way it runs, the way it flows, it's exactly what you want here. Flyers, what's up? <laughs> Wayne said, nay, he says, uh, not going to be able to make this event, but good luck to all complete competing with the sub. I appreciate it so much, Flyers. Then Wayne says, toxic bandit right now. <laughs> he, he's wishing everybody good luck. <laughs> Get that shit out of here. <laughs> Flyers, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for the support. 15 months, too. Man. For everybody that's hanging out watching along, man, they, these guys supporting what we're doing is what makes slide style possible. I, I'm as fully transparent with it as I can be. Any, all of the, the money that comes in from subs and the, the 25 cents or whatever that we get from ads and whatnot on Twitch, all of that goes into a PayPal account. And that is where the slide style prize money comes from and all of that and whenever you know if if there's a new game that's going to come out we're going to all play it on stream together or whatever or if we ever when it used to be when we would hold a little contest and say you know we'll gift a game to whoever wins little contest or whatever that's it all comes from there but that is all i mean the support is directly injected back into the community for sure none of it is uh Me and Charlie aren't over here partying it up. That is for sure. It is all directly returned back into our streaming community. And I really appreciate all the support for everyone. Yeah, Flyers, you threw down at this one. But uh, going to a concert, what, uh, what concert are you going to be checking out? Cruising rocket, ripping it. Rocket, good grief. No, it is right. I'm sorry, I've read it, but then I was about, I was getting ready to say that they were rocketing into the first turn, but then his name is Rocket, and I, st I stumbled all over myself. Man, that's a great commentator right there, right? But anyway, Cruise and Rocket rocketing into the first turn. Uh, but I noticed that time Rocket carried a whole lot of speed off the start in that chase position. And instead of, like, letting off the gas or whatever, he was just, like, lightly dragging the brake to allow Cruz to get into that lead position before initiating into the first turn. And that kind of, it reminds me a lot of uh, in NASCAR when they're on a drift, uh, drifting, drafting track, such as Daytona or Talladega or now Atlanta this year, um, they, they will do the same thing as they're, they're trying to pull the, the car behind them kind of up to them but not lose RPM as they'll slightly drag the brake just to, to crack their momentum just a little bit.
But I, I like that. I think that's going to be a, a good strategy off the starting line here for this course. Such a high-speed drag race into the first turn. Flyers getting to see the warning. It's a ban from Mexico. Okay. Uh, Hero, it's in the it's same as always in the password channel in the slide style Discord. We are getting ready to get off of here though. Probably another five minutes or so for me before I've got to head out. Lots of stuff to work on tonight. Charlie is gonna be streaming as well. If anybody wanted to go hang out and see what she's up to. Rocket shallowing up that third corner so he could get back to the door of Wayne by the finish. Definitely going to be a lot of that going on as well this Sunday. If a driver has another driver slightly pull away from him, this is the best line to be able to just slightly modify the arc of your turn to be able to gain ground back on the driver in front of you. Or you see Theory there able to transition. He backed off and was able to transition ever so slightly earlier into that final turn it put him on the door all the way through it so little things like that make a huge difference J star making his way in on the lead for Wayne here solid looking run from those two Watching your two-time slide style champion and first event winner of 2024, Wayne sending it through the server. That S15 machine running clean. A little 360 dance there. Somebody's got to take this man out. I'm telling you. <laughs> I love Wayne like the next guy, but somebody has got to take this guy out. Two championships back to back and then came out 2024 and stamped the first qualifying run and then won the whole damn thing. Somebody has got to handle this business. I think these next two maps, if anybody's going to have a chance, these next two maps are a great opportunity. Not that Wayne does not do a great job on both of those two maps, but there's some unpredictability that comes with Red Ring and Silverstone here with the seemingly simple map layouts. Like I said, there's little, little tiny little intricacies that make a huge difference in how the run goes. just outside. All right, well, apparently the puppy dog is not feeling good, guys. So I'm going to uh, help Charlie clean up a mess in the house real quick. Like I said a little while ago, it's gonna be about five minutes for me anyway, but I do believe this is gonna be it for us right here. So uh, we're going to have to get out of here tonight. Going to pull up the calendar for you real quick. Definitely be sure 
to come hang out with us this Sunday. We're going to be at Red Ring April 21st. That is this Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Exclamation point slide style will definitely be the spot. Discord server there, all the information that you need to know. So be sure to check that out. And you will see all of these guys in action at Red Ring, and then we will turn around here. Round three will be at Silverstone. That's going to be May 5th, so definitely get on the Slide Style Discord and check that schedule out. So until next time, this has been Slide Style on your screen. We'll see you on Sunday. I have been Alex. Thank you all so much. Be safe out there, and we will see you guys next time.